now in 2024 i can say that i've got like some good friends in the riding community in calgary but in 2021 i don't know anybody and we were just there to see if anybody wanted to come have a good time yeah and we were just talking about it actually as we were like getting ready for it then there was like this like this like blip you know like from <laughs> 2021 to 2023 it's like what even happened we like it was, it's such a weird time as i'm sure a lot of people felt that way like just life went on life just sort of happened and next thing we knew it was like 2023 was ending and as a lot of you know 2023 at the end of it just now it was a crazy time for us as we were approaching the end of the year we were coming up against a $55,000 owing on rent mountain uh and we weren't All sure we weren't sure if we were going to be able to make it happen it was looking like end of days for house of wheels for us and we were holding on hope we we're trying to do everything that we could to get the money that we needed to pay the landlord and also with landlords like you never know uh what they're gonna say what they're gonna do how they're gonna react and things like yeah. that and so we were holding on, trying to make things work. And then I think it was like mid-December, we got hit with some legal action, basically from both landlords, Calgary and Edmonton at the same time. And they're basically saying like, get caught up, pay the 55 in essence, or uh, we're gonna be kicking you guys out, which they have every right to do. And that's when we launched the Save the Parks campaign. Hail Mary, saved it for the last, last possible minute, definitely. Yeah, mid-December, we just threw it out to you guys because there was literally nothing that we could do um, after all that. Like, we only had two weeks till the end of the year, and both landlords were like, yeah, in the new year, if you don't catch up on this, like, total of, like, pretty much $55,000, then uh, we're going to kick you out. And honestly, I, could, I just can't believe still to this day, like, the response that we got from, from you guys and from the riding community and from the parents of, like, all the riders that have been like coming to House of Wheels over the years, just like all the support and like the way that people just like came out of the woodworks to to really truly save these parks. Um, like I remember one um, one parent in Calgary, she just came in and was just like, "Give me all your skate stuff," basically, because her son was like an avid skateboarder down there, uh, and we just kept like taking. Give, taking decks off the wall and like she took like four sets of wheels and literally she took like the entire bulk roll of grip tape that we had left over and cut it into like skateboard sized chunks and then paid for each individual chunk it was crazy and I was just sitting there like speechless the entire time I didn't even know how to react and I heard about people here in Edmonton like paying double for ride time just telling people like no nah, charge me again, I'm only, I'm only riding tonight, but like charge me for two kind of thing. And like people donating to like the silent auction that we did, just bringing in like all kinds of stuff from all over the place. It was, it was wild and like truly, truly humbling to me um, just in like that last two weeks of 2023 there. It was crazy. Yeah, there was so much going on. Like it was pretty much just full time trying to keep up with all the help that was being offered. So it truly was like a community, a full community uh, effort. Uh, we got news stations in here. We had like bottle donations going crazy. People were like running their own bottle drives, just gathering their yeah. friends' bottles, driving truck around, loads. getting bottles, bringing in truckloads, and we're taking bottles in like crazy. People, um, a couple of specific people suggested we should do like a music concert. And so huge shout out to like Ryan with... Um, Purple City. Purple City and Maddie with Project 23 and all of the bands that came out for our Save the Parks fundraiser concert. That was crazy. Like that raised $10,000 basically by itself, which was just insane. It was super cool. The music sounded awesome. Everybody did such a great job yeah. and it was just such cool vibes. We had people riding, doing flips and stuff in the background as the bands are playing and people are listening and dancing and uh, so we might do Such more of those. Crazy night. So that's, that was cool. That was definitely cool. So all in all, uh, this is actually probably the first time we're like really saying a, a real number, uh, but like um, it was like 64 fives. Like depending on where you cut the lines and stuff, like we could say it was like 64, 65, 
$100,000 total raised in two weeks to save the parks. And so a huge thing. 10 thanks grand you. over our 10 target. 10 grand over our impossible target of $55,000. <laughs> and no so kidding. huge thank you to everybody who helped out with that because we would not be here right now without that. So I, I can't even express how grateful we are. Yeah, thank you, thank you, like a million, million times over. Um, and then like, I guess with that, just kind of like an explanation of like going forwards, cause I know that like I, both of us have had people come up and they're like, so like you made the GoFundMe, like we saved the parks, right? Like we're golden. And like, they kind of have the attitude that like, we're just flying into the new year, 2024, just laughing and like not a care in the world. But like essentially what that was, like that 55,000 was just like a break even point to like kind of get a fresh start with the landlords in both Edmonton and Calgary. And so like definitely we're grateful. And like Bevan said, like we wouldn't be here at all without the Save the Parks fundraiser campaign that happened. But now what I feel is like we have to continue to save, continue to save the parks um, through 2024 because we're not just like free and clear we get to keep trying is really what it is and so this year we really want to kind of focus on like changing things um, so that we can build the park and build the riding community so that we don't have to go through that like save the parks campaign again mm -hmm. um c crazy story about that like we you know we raised all this money and like the whole community pulled oh, through yeah. and saved us and it was like absolutely crazy and we we you know january 1st we're so happy so grateful we to made be it. sending all of that money uh to the landlords to be like we caught up we did it let us keep being here and they're like okay cool but now you owe us like an extra like what was it like 2500 yeah like three, three grand like three extra grand. three grand they raised rent. the rent Starting the 2024, our Edmonton landlord raised Happy the rent New Year. by three grand <laughs> without even like notifying us. Like it was so bizarre. It pretty much just took it right out of they're, our bank They're account. just like, yeah, you owe us Ridiculous. more. Uh, sorry. And no, sorry. so if anybody's a lawyer and knows that that's <laughs> not okay and could help us, like, please, I yeah. don't know what our, what our recourse is there, but, and maybe there is none. But yeah, rent went up at the beginning of 2024, yeah. so that was a little bit of a slap in the face straight at, straight after this like miracle of a Save the Parks fundraiser. Um, then we know we, we're going to have to owe like three times 12 is 36, you know, 36,000 extra dollars for 2024. For 2024. So that was a Nearly gut punch. the whole fundraiser again. Yeah, so... Yikes. We definitely got a lot of work to do, but we are confident and hopeful that we're going to make that happen. So we wanted to also just quickly highlight a few things that we have coming up. And uh, that's going to be like a big focus of what we'll talk about is everything that we have going on and everything that we have coming up. But just a couple of highlights. Uh, last year, we launched Alberta Action Sports, which is doing the competitions and all that kind of stuff. And we sent the riders to Worlds for ISF and we're putting on bike competitions and scooter competitions and skateboard competitions and inline competitions and this year we're just days away from launching it I, I might actually be public by the time this podcast airs but we're going to launch the schedule um, right away here because we got lots planned for you guys really cool things coming up so definitely watch for that schedule be riding honing in your skills because there's going to be lots of opportunities for some cool stuff in 2024. Yeah, I'm stoked for the 2024 competition season and seeing all the like lines and like competition runs that you guys throw down. That's one of my favorite things to see is just like the progression of even just the young riders and what they bring to the table on competition day because that extra adrenaline is just like huge and I love it and I hope that you guys enjoy it as well. Other things are House of Wheels is launching our outdoor summer camps. Um, and outdoor. So outside, outdoor at the concrete parks. Um, we've always done the indoor ones and we're vamping those ones up a little bit as well, but like we really feel like these outdoor ones are gonna be sweet. What do we call them? They're like outdoor action sports adventure camps because yeah. we're gonna be yeah. getting in buses and kind of touring around the city and hitting up the different major concrete parks out there with the coaches for all riding disciplines like scooter, skateboard, BMX, even inline. If you wanna do like a sweet summer camp all week, traveling around the city, hitting up skate parks, this is the place to do it. 
uh, and our coaches will show you a good time. So I'll, I'm stoked about that as well. Yeah, and one thing that's awesome about the summer camps is, uh, or sorry, the outdoor summer camps, the outdoor action sports adventure camps is it's multiple disciplines, right? And so like yeah. if you want to do scooter and skateboard and ride both in the camp, you can do that. Or maybe you're a scooter rider and you want to try biking. Um, maybe there's like an avenue that that can happen, right? And so you because can bring your scooter, get a rental bike. You know, yeah, whatever that. it is. And so that'll be a cool experience for us, new experience. So definitely, like if you're looking for something cool to do in the summer, hit up our website hustlewheels.ca. You can sign up for the indoor camps if you just want it to be how it has been in the past, or sign up for the outdoor camps. Yeah, uh, and it'll be a good time. And then the other thing that we got going on this year, and this is a big thing that we think is going to bring a lot, bear a lot of fruit for the overall operation of House of Wheels is we're going to be leveraging that nonprofit Alberta Action Sports that we launched a year ago. And basically the idea is, is that Alberta Action Sports is gonna take over. Uh, we want Alberta Action Sports to become sort of the umbrella parent company uh, that's sort of looking over everything and basically operating everything. And so that should open up the doors to all kinds of different opportunities, government funding, uh, grants and things like that, maybe some breaks here and there. And a big part of that is going to be memberships, uh, mm -hmm. people signing up for memberships and fundraising opportunities through memberships all year long. And the big crescendo of the Alberta Action wow. Sports takeover is going to be the Alberta Action Sports takeover tour, which we're planning it's a big, big skate park citywide takeover where we'll be hiring a bunch of buses and loading them up with riders and we're going to tour both cities calgary and edmonton hit up all the skate parks and get a get sponsors everything it's going to be this huge cool cool super event and uh so that'll be awesome but just overall alberta action sports kind of taking over taking over yeah like bevin said a big part of that is going to be the memberships and just like a quick note we did have a few discussions last year with like city councilors and like kind of government officials and stuff trying to look for other ways that House of Wheels and Alberta Action Sports could be supported. And one of the main things that they said is, well, like where we put our money, like the government's money, usually depends on how many members you got. Like we look at the organization, look what they're doing, be like, yeah, cool, it's great, but do you have members that actually want this to happen? And so right now we're working on finishing off like the Alberta Action Sports membership program. And so when you see that, it's very, very useful for us, for you guys to sign up to be an Alberta Action Sports member, because then we can take that to like the city or like whoever's in charge of like those kinds of things and be like, look, we got all these hundreds of members. Can you help us? And that's what, that'll be a big motivator for outside money to help support these sports that we love and that's really what we want to do is support you guys as riders and give you all the opportunities that you can so watch for that coming up definitely and uh also bevan brought up sponsorships especially for the takeover and for the competitions and like even like the house of wheels park um, we are looking for corporate spark sponsorship and partnership opportunities so like if you know somebody or if you have like a company that you would like to support and like get some exposure through the action sports community uh hit us up because we're looking for all the opportunities that we can get to to make these things great and make them huge yeah definitely like it's it's really just like a full-on effort to build the sports of action sports one thing that i've felt throughout the whole time is that action sports don't necessarily get the credit that they deserve uh, for the benefits that they offer to yeah. their members, their riders, um, the mental health benefits, the just the physical aspects of it. Um, and so we are really in a war against some negative stereotypes and some negative vibes that maybe some people have towards action sports, but then also just against... Um, what am I trying to say? Like that, that like we deserve this, like the city needs this, like the indoor riding facilities, a structured program where people can compete or ride recreational, whichever one's their preference. And so that's really, like I said, our, our full effort is to be providing that year round riding, make sure that it's happening all the time. 
And uh, yeah, we just want to, this, this podcast is going to be just to let you into the ins and outs, the ups and downs, the struggles, the highs, the lows. Sometimes it feels like the lows beat the highs and sometimes it feels like the highs are beating the lows. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's a yeah. good time. It's an adventure. Well, yeah, and just also, like, for me personally, going into 2024, one thing that, like, the Save the Parks campaign made me realize is, like, I don't ride enough. I don't, I don't do enough riding on my own time. I always get caught up in, like, the working of running this place. And uh, so that's one of my goals is to, like, ride more uh, with Bevan as well. And hopefully we can uh, kind of post that and maybe do some, like, progression clips or something like that to, to utilize these parks because I know I love them for sure. Um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for watching that, our first vlog cast, talking to camera time. We don't know what to call it. What is this going to be called? I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't know what we're going to call Between it. Between two bikes, or there's only one bike here. Oh, uh, two dudes in a scooter. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. We're gonna have to edit that one out. <laughs> um, yeah, so we don't know. Maybe behind, we have an Instagram thing that we started. It was like behind, behind house, house of wheels. Of wheels. We could call yeah, maybe. Let us know in the comments uh, what we should call this thing, and uh, check out some other videos. You know, subscribe. You're supposed to subscribe. Hit the you, notification. If you enjoyed bell. this, click subscribe. here because it's going to be wicked. Whatever the button is, do that kind of stuff, and uh, we'll keep some good stories coming your way and keep you updated on what's going on. Definitely. Peace. Peace.